Hey, good morning, 60. How are you guys? Oh, wow. Well, the one thing my generation did, my generation is responsible for the two greatest sports movies of all time. And they are Brian's Song, which starred Billy Dee Williams and James Conn. And it was about two college football players who went on to play for the Chicago Bears uh, and were the first two guys, uh, um, first black guy and first white guy, uh, to room together in the NFL. Um, uh, and it was a great movie. And it addressed the social issues and mores of the times. What was you know, about um, the height of the civil rights uh, movement in the United States, and um, and it it uh, it showed uh, two guys that uh, were competing for the same position on the same team, uh, as they went on to become friends, uh, and uh, Gail Sayers, um, who Billy Dean Williams played, ended up being the NFL Rookie of the Year, and James Kahn, his friend and roommate was diagnosed with cancer and died a tragic early death. And so the muse the movie was obligated obligated to address the social issues of the time at its heart and its core which is about two teammates um, um, that, that uh, grew to care for one another and uh, and uh, how they learned from one another and uh, and how they they uh, they de dealt with a terrible situation uh, with some dignity uh, and um, um, it was just a wonderful movie um, and when you look back at the athletes of color at that time and, um, how they were they were uh, perceived some of them often very, in many cases, most cases, rightfully so, there's men of great dignity. Uh, you look at guys like Jim Brown and Bill Russell and and, uh, and Jackie Robinson, who were you know prior to that, obviously. But you know, uh, it was uh, Roberto Clemente. You know, um, these guys were were guys, not just athletes, but uh, carried themselves with such dignity. Um, the second. It's the other movie from my era that my generation, the second greatest sports movie of all time, of course, Harlem Globetrotters on Gilligan's Island. Right? Exactly. Um, and I often wonder if that's where our NFL is headed today. Um, with the, with the, uh, with the childish and uh, immature celebration after scoring a touchdown, um, it's just ridiculous. Uh, it's just absolutely ridiculous. I, I can't imagine Bill Russell and John Thompson and Roberto Clemente and Jim Brown agreeing to uh, <laughs> agreeing to be bowling pins, uh -huh. or or playing duck duck goose in the end zone. Um, I just I think they'd have an issue with that. Um, ah, at the same time, though, I wonder if our NFL, if that's where they're headed for their entertainment dollar. Are we going hard, straight Harlem Globetrotters with the NFL? Um, like the next time a catch is uh, overruled in the end zone, is Antonio Brown going to chase the, uh, the referee around with a bucket of water? And, uh, which we all know is confetti in there, but it gets us every time, doesn't it? We just know it. And then, are they going to make the switch? Crisscross, right? They'll make the switch. Then Mike Tomlin, he's in on it. And they throw him a bucket, and it's not confetti this time. The referee ducks, and Mike Tomlin gets a bucket of water on him. And then the fans go crazy, you know, because Mike Tomlin was in on it, too. Because he's in on it, too. Believe me, he is. Okay? Because um, he sanctions it, and he okays it. Um, and it's so beneath their dignity. It's bad enough they get their brains beat in to get in the end zone, but once they get there, now we expect them to put on a little jig for us. Shame on us. Shame on you for participating if you do.
Um, the other thing is this is, is uh, you know, there's a moral to this story. I don't want to be get off my lawn in my day, but the moral of the story is, I think, in Brian's song, certainly the moral of that story would be that, um, that we recognize each other's differences and we work together for a common goal. And, uh, and even in the most tragic of circumstances, we can find common ground and, uh, and, and proceed with dignity. Um, and then I think the moral of the story on, uh, you know, Harlem Globetrotters on Gilligan Island is, if you ever, uh, if you ever find yourself uh, stranded on an island uh, with, with um, a bunch of white people, uh, don't surrender, surrender or exchange your dignity for a basketball. Um, do what the Globetrotters did. Leave immediately, okay? Leave them stranded on that island. Um, and then, uh, and as a sidebar, a lot of you may or may not know that Meadowlark Lemon, the king prankster for the, uh, for the Harlem Globetrotters, actually got Marianne pregnant. Um, I know it was, under the, it was a different time, it was a different era. TV executives uh, did everything they could to keep that under wrap. But uh, if you think I'm kidding, Steph Curry. Look at Steph Curry. Um, um, look at a picture of Mary Ann from Gilligan's Island. Look at a picture of Meadowlark Lemon from the Harlem Globetrotters. And tell me that that's not their child. Okay. Um, so some good came out of that too. Oh, I keep and really shoot the ball. Um, okay. Um, um, happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. And uh, whatever else you celebrate out there. Um, peace. Peace.